Any questions to ask from the retina speciality? I think we have explained very well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, very good morning to everyone. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank AIOS uh, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, after such an elaborative talks on retinal disorders, I would be moving towards the application of OCT in a neuro-ophthalmological conditions. So I have no financial interest to disclose. So now uh, I will not discuss OCT as a machine because we have already discussed it very nicely. So this is the evolution of OCT, which is a non-invasive and non-contact -techno technology. Just a brief review what, what the printout looks like. So this is the OCT printout, where in this section we see the patient details. This tells us about the what has been done in a particular patient, whether we have assessed, uh, examined the macula, macular area or the optic disc cube, along with the uh, pixel strength and the literality of the eye. This section, this is showing the RNFL thickness maps. And these are the various parameters we assess while doing the OCT RNFL. And this is the uh, gray picture of uh, OCT fundus image. And these are the graphs showing the, as, a, as comparison to the general population, how the, in a particular patient, these are deviated. And these are the quadrant wise thickness. And this is the average, uh, th this is the uh, eight, uh, clock hours distribution of the RNFL uh, layer thickness in a particular patient. So this is just the brief what we see in the OCT printout. So now my point of discussions would be the imaging parameters. What are the useful parameters we see in the neuroophthalmological conditions, a disease specific OCT findings and then the important points to consider. So now coming to the role. So how it helps us in a neuroophthalmological condition. Actually, OCT is a surrogate marker of neuroaxonal integrity in an afferent visual pathway. It helps us in diagnosing various conditions, disease monitoring, and to prognosticate. That's a, that is also an another useful application where we can prognosticate the patient as per the OCT findings. So then the most valuable structure parameters are RNFL thickness and the GCL thickness. So now the disease entity, optic neuritis, what we mostly see in a neuro-ophthalmological condition. So OCT can be used as a quantitative tool to monitor the course and the treatment. So initial spike in RNFL thickness is due to the exoplasmic flow stasis, which can mask the earlier signs of exonal degeneration. Initially, we will see the increased RNFL thickness. And there we don't know whether it is the exonal degeneration already happening or it's just edema at that point of time. So macular OCT scan is an, another important adjunct in such situations. So like case one, this is a MS patient with optic neuritis in the left eye showing initial spike of RNFL thickness. So initial spike of RNFL thickness, which is masking the exonal degeneration. So here we can see the OCT picture of same patient showing marked GCL thinning. So that means exonal degeneration has happened in this patient, which GCL has shown. So now coming, uh, just I'm uh, discussing this important paper where ret retinal nerve fiber layer thickness and visual functions have been assessed in a patients of optic neuritis and multiple sclerosis. And this study has concluded that RNFL thickness is reduced in optic neuritis patient and even in the multiple sclerosis patient where the optic neuritis attack has not yet happened. Then also you can see the deranged parameters and then, um, and the pattern was similar to the Caucasian eyes. So uh, now coming to the another important publication, I was a part of this publication where we have assessed the RNFL layer and GCL thick changes on OCT in a multiple sclerosis patient, early multiple sclerosis patient. And we have seen that GCL thickness is a more sensitive clinical parameter than the RNFL, in a, especially in an early multiple sclerosis patient. And ONS patient and, uh, and the GCL correlates better with the visual parameters as well, better than the RNFL. So now coming to the NMO spectrum diseases. So what different we see in a NMO spectrum disorders as compared to the MS, multiple sclerosis. Normally in a NMO spectrum disorder, RNFL is affected in all the quadrants as compared to the MS where mostly the temporal quadrant is involved first. And many a times in NMO spectrum disorder, if the optic neuritis has not yet happened, then you can find the normal RNFL values. Whereas in multiple sclerosis, even without the optic neuritis attack, you can see the deranged values. 
and then the mean RNFA loss in multiple sclerosis it's around 20 to 30 microns micrometer but whereas in a NMO disorders it is much more profound so around 855 to 83 microns and in the NMO spectrum disorder there is a higher prevalence of microcytic macular edema so now coming to the ischemic optic neuropathies OCT can be used to identify the treatment effects the thickness of macula OCT and GCL is a expected to provide a better structural indicator and even in ischemic optic neuropathy the distinctive altitudinal pattern of the GCL uh, loss can correspond to the altitudinal field effect as well so you can correlate on OCT as well as the field perimetry so here the left uh, left NAION in acute stage the optic nerve swelling caused the RNFL thickening RNFL thickening which has masked the exonal loss However, GCIPL analysis showed abnormal thinning. So then another case, uh, which was an old case, left eye NAIN three years back, showing thinning of the superior temporal aspect in peripapillary RNFL. So here in a chronic case or in a recovered case, you still see the thinning of RNFL. So there is a floor effect also with OCT, which limits the detection of progressive RNFL GCL above 30 to 50 microns. So if it is a very advanced disease, it should not be interpreted in isolation. Like this is the, uh, this much is thickness has gone. So you have to correlate clinically as well. And along with the multiple sclerosis, role of OCT is getting established in other diseases like Parkinsonism, Alzheimer's, etc. So now coming to papilledema, definitely a very good application of OCT here. So change in the optic disc edema over the time can be better quantified. So many a times we have to objectively see these are the uh, values, these are getting lowered or not. So sometime to the neurophysiology, uh, uh, neurology person also, neurology specialist, you have to explain in a better way because subjective some uh, one, uh, Different people can have the different perspectives, so values should be there. So RNFL with a traditional OCT cannot differentiate whether the disc edema is decreasing due to reduction in ICP or it is an exonal loss. So here come the GCL which indicates that exones are indeed dying off if the, it is showing the thinning. So OCT picture of a patient with unilateral disc edema, unilateral disc edema which is uh, showing the normal GCL IPL thickness. So here in this such kind of patient you can explain a better prognosis. You can tell that the prognosis is good. So similarly here, uh, sorry. So similarly here you can see that the GCL is already thin, thinned out. So you can explain the prognosis as per the GCL findings. So another study uh, done by Mark J. Cooper Smith, they have shown that uh, there is a positive inward angulation, positive inward angulation of the peripapillary RPE and basement <laughs> membrane relative to the peripheral peripapillary region. So there is a positive angulation inward toward the vitreous. And they have concluded that it is com RPE basement membrane is commonly deflected inward in contrast to the eyes with NAION or optic neuritis where it, this finding was not there. So this angulation is presumed to be caused because of elevated pressure in a subarachnoid space but it does not correlate with the amount of RNFL. This is just a finding. We cannot correlate this angulation with the RNFL thickness values. So now another uh, publication where the OCT features and correlation of functional structural parameters have been seen in IIH patients. So uh, Banerjee et al. they have uh, studied this. And they have concluded that in setting of severe papilledema, RNFL can misguide the prognosis. So GCL IPL can be a valuable tool for an objective evaluation of the integrity of optic nerve. And optic disc height may be used as an alternative or in combination with the GCL IPL in, the, in these cases. So now papilledema versus drusens, optic disc head drusens. So in drusens, usually you see the thinning of RNFL and GCL. Whereas in papilledema, definitely it is the increased thickness. And uh, the second important thing is a subretinal hyporeflective space between the RP and choriocapillaries, which suggests of optic disc drusens. And for Barrett, definitely the swept source and enhanced depth can improve the diagnostic detection. So another in optic atrophy, definitely you see the uh, thinning of the RNFL that is gross, gross thinning of the RNFL. Similarly, in the Leber's hereditary optic neuropathy, the thinning of the 
RNFL and GCL layers and the prognosis as uh, depending upon that you can explain. So one another uh, recent publication by John Chen et al. They have seen OCT in pituitary tumor patients where they have uh, observed the nasal hemiretinal ganglion cellular thinning in the pituitary patient which was corresponding to the visual field effects. So this is a one another important thing to see if there is a, any pituitary tumor patient coming to you. Perimetry definitely we have to do but then before perimetry sometime the uh, uh, OCT shows uh, the defect before the perimetry defects. So this is important tool in such patients. So in the last what are the important points to consider different machines have different protocols. So patients should be reviewed on a same machine using the same protocol. All the OCT measurements are compared to the normative data of Caucasian subjects which must be considered. An actual placement of measurement area should be checked and amended manually if needed. So if you are uh, examining the optic nerve area, so that should be a set properly centered there. So you should ma manually amend also if there is some decentration because otherwise the values will come fallacious. So thank you so much for the kind attention. Uh, if any doubt and any question to ask, I would be happy to answer. <laughs>